sometimes you may want to pin an object to the surface of another deforming object. In rigging this is sometimes called a rivet. So in this video I'm going to show you how to rivet entire objects to the surface of another object and I'll also show how to do that with bones, which needs just a little bit more work. You can now get access to all CG Dive tutorials, including my extensive paid courses, unreleased videos, and supporter-only content for just $5.99 a month. Check out academy.cgdive.com slash subscription. So here is an example where you may want to use a rivet. Here we have this knife. And currently it is parented with weights, so if I rotate this pelvis, you'll see the knife stretching. And this can be improved using weight painting, but sometimes this may not be enough and you may want a rivet. So here is how to do it. Currently the knife is part of the character. I'm going to go to edit mode and select all parts of this knife and then press P and separate the selection and that will make the knife its own object. And now I basically want to parent this knife object to the surface of this leg exactly at this point. So the knife will move with the leg, but it won't deform. Something to keep in mind with this technique is that the origin point of the object that needs to be parented is important. Currently the origin is over here, and I want to constrain it to here, so what will happen is that we'll parent this point to this point, and it won't work well. So I'll right-click, set origin, and choose origin to geometry, and that will place the origin inside the geometry of the knife. Then I can go to tool and enable effect only origin, and move this origin a little bit up. So this would be the perfect origin point in my opinion, and don't forget to uncheck only origins so that you are in normal object mode. Now to pin this object to the surface of the leg, I'm going to hide the knife temporarily, select the character object, go to edit mode and select three vertices in this area, right where the knife is. Then go back to object mode, Alt H to unhide the knife. Then select the knife, shift select the character, press Ctrl P and choose Vertex Triangle. And now if I move the pelvis, the knife will be moving um, slightly unpredictably. That is because I unparented this knife from the main character and it still has an armature modifier and that is influencing it. So I'm going to delete the armature modifier and go to vertex groups and delete all vertex groups. Now it should move more predictably. Notice how the knife stays attached to the leg of the character and it doesn't deform at all. Okay, so if you need to pin an object to the surface of another object, this is how you do it, using the three vertex parenting. And again, pay attention to the pivot point of the object that needs to be pinned. Now, just in case you're wondering, if I press Ctrl P here, there is another option which just says Vertex. That is very similar, but it will behave slightly differently. So let's hide the knife for a second, go to Edit Mode and select a single Vertex in this area. Go back to Object Mode, unhide the knife, select it, Shift Select the character, Ctrl P and Parent with Vertex. Now, if I rotate the pelvis, you'll see that it kind of behaves similarly, but if I push it too far, the knife keeps its orientation. So, because it's only parented to a single vertex, it doesn't have enough information to understand the orientation of the surface. And that is why we use three vertices. Three vertices give Blender enough information. So, if I undo here, hide the knife, go back to my character and select three vertices. By the way, these three vertices don't have to be connected. You just need three vertices and they create an imaginary triangle here. Select three vertices, select your object to be pinned, select the surface, control P, vertex, triangle. And now you'll have the object following the position 
and orientation of the surface. Now let's say that you want to pin a bone rather than an object to the surface of a mesh. Blender won't let you do that directly, but there is an easy workaround. Just pin any object to a surface and then you can constrain your bone to that object. Typically you would use an empty as the intermediate pin object and constrain the bone to that object using child of constraint or copy transforms. I'll demonstrate both, but either way you may get a strange dependency loop problem, so I'll explain why it happens and how to solve it. I'll start over with this character. So we have the knife still weighted to the hips. And first I want to pin or parent my intermediate object to the surface. The best type of object to use for this purpose is an empty because they won't show up in your renders. So I'm going to go to the character, edit mode, select the legs object and press shift H to isolate this selection and then select my three vertices and press shift S and cursor to select it. Go back to object mode, shift A, empty and you can use any shape you want their functionality is the same but i like the sphere for this kind of setup this empty is very large so i'll reduce its size and then i can shift select the character and press ctrl p and parent to a triangle and now the empty should stay attached to the surface by the way if i select this empty and shift select the character and go to edit mode and select my three vertices here. I can press Ctrl P in edit mode and choose make vertex parent. And that should have exactly the same effect as the vertex triangle parenting in object mode. However, I've noticed that sometimes parenting in object mode doesn't work, but parenting in edit mode like this does work. So I thought I'd mention this other approach. Either way, I'll check if my parenting is correct and it seems to work, so I can move on. Next, I want to create a new bone for the knife and make sure that all vertices of the knife are weighted to that bone. So I'll go to edit mode for the armature and the pivot point is in a good position, so I'll press shift A to create a new bone. With individual origins, I can scale down the bone and actually I'm going to grab the end of the bone and push it down like this I'll press F2 and rename this bone knife then go to object mode select my character shift select the rig and press ctrl P and choose empty groups that will just add this new knife vertex group for the new knife bone that we created And here's the new vertex group. If you don't see it, you can just look for it in this um, search field. Then I'll go to edit mode, unhide everything, and again select all meshes that belong to the knife. From this menu, I'm going to choose remove from all vertex group. That will completely unassign this knife from everything. And then with the knife vertex group selected and weight of one, I'm going to click assign. Now the knife should be fully controlled by the knife bone and also the knife bone is not affecting the leg or any other geometry. Now I'm ready to constrain the bone to the empty. So I'll select the knife bone in pose mode and go to bone constraints and choose a child of constraint. And then in the target field, I'm going to choose the empty. You can give your empty a more descriptive name like um, knife pin or knife rivet or whatever. If I go to pose mode for my rig and try to test it, you'll see that it kind of works. It seems to work. However, if you play with it some more, you may notice that the behavior of this bone is kind of wobbly and you have this snapping and slight teleporting of the knife. If I move it and then right click to cancel the movement, you'll see that the bone moves but the mesh doesn't, uh, so if I move something it will snap back into place. And this is because of a strange dependency loop. It's strange because it shouldn't happen, but it does. 
Basically, the knife bone is attached to the empty through the child of constraint. And the empty is attached to the surface of this object. And this knife bone could affect the surface area of the leg. So if it was affecting it, then it would be a real dependency loop because the bone is affecting the surface and the surface is affecting the empty and the empty is affecting the bone. However, I made sure that this bone doesn't have any effect on the surface. And that is why I say that it's a strange loop and it shouldn't happen. But I guess it's some sort of weirdness in Blender and it does happen. So here's my solution. We have to select the mesh and go to edit mode. And I already have the whole knife selected and I have to separate it into a separate object. Now I just have to go to the main mesh, vertex groups and find the knife vertex group and delete it. And now if I try moving things around, you'll see that there is no flipping of the um, knife, right? It's super stable. So that means that there is no dependency loop. You can also go to the system console and it will tell you if there is um, a dependency loop. This is actually the dependency loop that was happening before I fixed things. So the only solution that I found so far is to separate this object that I want to pin or rivet to the surface um, as a separate object. And then in the main surface mesh, remove any reference to the vertex group of the pinned bone. I hope this makes sense. And if you have a better solution, I would love to know about it. Okay, so now we have things working with the child of constraint. And the child of constraint is great. It's very easy to set up, but it can be a little bit unpredictable. Something that I forgot to mention is that um, this bone here is not parented to anything. But technically, I should parent it to the root. So if I parent it here to the root and then go to pose mode and move the root, you'll see that we have these uh, double transforms. And I guess there may be some way to fix that. Um, but if you're having trouble with the child of constraint, I would highly recommend that you use copy transforms instead. It's easy to set up. So I'm going to get rid of the child of constraint. Then go to object mode. Select the empty and make sure that the 3D cursor is at the exact position of the empty. And then go back to the rig, edit mode, and create a new bone at that position. And scale it down. And from the side view, I want to rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm going to rename this bone to MCH knife pin, for example. And then parent the knife bone to this new uh, MCH bone. So there are two reasons for creating this additional bone. The first one is that the copy transforms constraint requires the orientation and location of the bone to be exactly overlapping with the empty. Another reason is that when we constrain the bone with copy transforms in world space, we'll lose the ability to move or rotate that bone. But when we have the MCH bone as a buffer, so to speak, we'll be able to manipulate the knife bone. So let's do it. I'll select the MCH bone, give it copy transforms constraint, choose the empty, actually the knife pin empty. And that should be it actually. When I move the setup, the knife should move. And now if I try to rotate or move this um, constraint bone, it won't move. But this knife bone, I can move freely. And that gives me some freedom to move this bone just in case, um, you know, I hit some extreme pose in which the bone, uh, in which the knife starts to, let's say, clip into the body. I can rotate it if I wanted to. So this is how you create rivets or surface pins in Blender. It's not something that you would use in simple rigs, but when you need it, it can be very useful. If you learned something new, please click like, subscribe, and check out academy.cgdive.com because at the CG Dive Academy, you can find all of my exclusive tutorials and exclusive content.